The empirical science contradicts evolution, but religion mandates it. There are many religious arguments that mandate evolution to be true. They can be found throughout the literature, but one of the arguments, God of the Gaps, is more social. It is harder to find this argument in the literature, but it is very popular. You hear it in the lab, lunchroom, or lecture, and this social aspect of evolution is very important. I discussed this in my video on the God of the Gaps argument. And this has become a very popular argument for evolution. Now, you won't often see it in formal presentations like journal papers or textbooks, but socially it's very popular on the internet, in lectures, and word of mouth. If you're a graduate student, a postdoc, a young researcher, you're probably well familiar with this. It's a very popular argument socially. And science is a very social activity. It's not all math and experiments and derivations. It's very social. Uh, you need to have the, uh, the respect of your peers and the confidence of your peers. You also need to get funding grants. And so you need to be looked upon as a, a good scientist. Your social standing is as important uh, practically as anything else although you'd, I'd like not to think of that, but it is a very social activity. And social pressures are very important in science, they just are. And the God of the Gaps is a very powerful social argument for evolution. Now, I want to show you an example of how this argument is deployed in a social setting. It comes from Lee Cronin, a successful professor in Britain. There are segments in society that, that wanna cause the God of the Gaps. And I'm sorry, Jim, I actually think you're just trying. You, there's a God in the gaps. What a great example. This is exactly the sort of social setting I was referring to. And did you see how confidently the argument is deployed? Evolutionists find this argument to be very persuasive, a slam dunk. If someone is guilty of the God of the gaps faux pas, well, that's the end of it. The problem is this evolutionary argument isn't scientific. In fact, it is opposed to the science. Back to my video. So what about this God of the gaps argument? So what you need to be asking yourself is, what would you do, what would a scientist do if he or she discovered negative evidence for evolution? What would happen if you discovered a problem? Contradictions, scientific contradictions to the theory of evolution. Well, under the God of the gaps, you really can't come forward with negative problems with evolution if they're going to actually question evolution. It has a chilling effect. God of the gaps has a chilling effect. Um, evolution is always going to be the right answer regardless of the evidence. You can change the theory of evolution. You can hypothesize new mechanisms, new explanations, so long as it's evolution of some sort. But if you're going to question evolution, the retort is going to be at the social level, uh-oh, it's another Isaac Newton, it's another God of the gaps problem, uh-oh, it's not good. Don't do that. It's the third rail, you cannot touch that. You cannot question evolution because you'd be committing the God of the gaps faux pas. Arguments like God of the Gaps make negative evidence irrelevant. Evolution has to be the right answer regardless of the evidence. So it protects the theory. It protects the theory from negative evidence from empirical problems. It's a non-empirical argument. The argument doesn't depend on empirical evidence. It's impervious to empirical evidence. It doesn't matter what you find. Evolution has to be the right answer. Religion drives science, and it matters.